Hi, my name is Jeanette and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. Today I'm going to share a series review or my thoughts on the series Wings of Glory by Sarah Sundin. So book one is A Distant Melody, book two is A Memory Between Us, and book three is Blue Skies Tomorrow. So a Distant Melody, book one, was Sarah Sundin's debut novel, and it came out in the spring of 2010. Then book two was released in the fall of 2010, and book three came out in 2011. I have just read this series in September, and book one, A Distant Melody, came up on my September TBR. I had not planned on readings book two and book three right away because I didn't own them. I only owned book one. But I absolutely loved book one that I had to pick up two and three immediately and I read them back to back. I read this series in a week. I started book one on a Saturday and I finished book three on the next Saturday. So basically this series kind of the main characters in all three books are three Novak brothers. They are all pilots of B-17s and it is a historical fiction set during the time of World War II. Basically, I think I have found a new favorite author. I absolutely loved book one, as I mentioned, and had to pick up book two and book three. And I also, I enjoyed them, not as much as I liked book one, but I still enjoyed them. And I have another Sarah Sandine book on my TBR for October. So I'm just, I'm really looking forward to that. So book one, I immediately fell in love with the characters of Allie and Walt. These two meet at a wedding, but come from two very different worlds. Walt is the son of a pastor and is leaving to serve in the war as a fighter pilot. Allie is set to inherit her father's company and her family has arranged marriage for her. Walt struggles to talk to girls, but he finds he has no problems talking to Allie. Why is she different? Allie finds herself drawn to Walt and is able to share her inner feelings, but she can't get too close. The story is set during World War II and is filled with friendship, romance, faith, humor, sad and horrific experiences, but overall it is a genuine connection between the characters that really endured me to the story. There are real issues happening and the characters grow over the course of the book. They experience highs and lows, make good and bad decisions, but learn to trust God through it all. I can't fully explain how much these characters touched me. When they hurt, I hurt. I did get frustrated near the end of the book with a couple of their actions that led to miscommunication. If they would put their pride and fear aside for a minute, they could have saved themselves so much heartache. At one point, Walt does something that made me yell, you idiot. I found myself fascinated with the scenes overseas with Walt. I didn't always comprehend all the technical details of the plane and what each man's position entailed, but I could follow it enough to understand what they were experiencing. It did not take away from my enjoyment of the book. I learned so much about the experiences of those living during this time in history, both overseas and at the home front. I didn't know much about rationing prior to this book. There is a very strong message about the importance of telling the truth and shows what can happen when you don't. I truly admired Allie's courage in choosing to follow God's leading, even when it was hard and caused her extreme heartache. I looked forward to reading the letters exchanged. I was happy with the way the story ended and I immediately picked up book two in hopes that I would get to spend more time with these characters. I have two quotes that I've taken from this book. One, if joining a God-fearing church and volunteering to help wounded servicemen with strange and restless behavior, then she hoped to be even stranger and more restless. Then, quote number two, lies are like incendiary bombs, burning and melting and mangling everything, trust, hope, 
and everyone you love. So then book two picks up immediately after, well, no, it actually overlaps a little bit of the time period in book three. So kind of, or sorry, book one. So basically what you've read a scene in book one very near the end, and then it kind of picks up with that scene happening again in book two, but from a different pers character's perspective. And basically book two is, are you willing to trust God when something bad happens? This story features the brother of Walt from book one and picks up during the same time period. Just like his younger brother, Jack is a pilot serving overseas and Ruth is a nurse in the army hospital. These characters capture my heart almost from the moment I met them. I especially like the friendship between Ruth and May. When we first meet Ruth, she is a nurse who hasn't connected with anyone around her and is basically all alone until May pushes her for friendship. The more I got to know Ruth and learn about her background, my heart hurt for her. She has been through so much already in life and is trying to carry all her burdens on her own. I was glad that Jack and May were pushy in forming a friendship with her. This may have pushed her outside of her comfort zone and caused her hurt at times, but in the end, it really helped her grow as a person and find a relationship with God along with happiness. There is one scene where Jack really made me mad. I could understand his initial reaction to finding out something about Ruth's past, but when she shares more about what happened, I was very annoyed with how he reacted. I liked the main characters of Ruth and Jack, but it was their friends, May and Charlie, that were my favorites. So much so that I shed tears at one particular scene. I liked that Charlie confronted Jack about his actions and made him think about whether or not he was putting his trust in God or in himself. So kind of two quotes that I wanna share from this is, God never promised to take her out of the valley, but to be with her, guide her, and comfort her in the valley. And then this second quote really kind of struck home with me. If she knew the results, it wouldn't be trust. So if you knew what was going to happen ahead of time, then you wouldn't have to trust God for what was going on. So we have to trust because we don't know the results. I just, that was, when I read that, it was like, oh, yeah, right? That's what he's trying to tell me. And there was one particular scene in this book that I can't talk about because it will be a spoiler of what's going on or what kind of what happens, but... It just, it hit home so much for me. I have not experienced exactly what happened, but just the he said, she said thing was just, and what happens uh, coming out of it, it was just like, wow. And on the day I read this, it just, I, I stopped, shared it with my husband and like, was like, how, how interesting is that I'm reading this today? based on what was going on with me that day. It just, yeah. I, I had this conversation with my friend was, it's amazing how God speaks to you through fiction books and can use a fiction story to kind of share his message. And this is why I read Christian fiction. Cause it just, yeah, it's amazing. So book three, Blue Skies Tomorrow, features Helen, who is a young widow trying to raise her young son, and Ray is a pastor turned pilot who is being training pilots on the home front until they change regulations that trainers must have combat experience. This prompts Ray to question if he is a coward by serving on the home front rather than fighting in the war overseas. It took me a bit to connect with these two characters, but once I found out that Helen was dealing with a really dark secret, I began to really care about her and want her secret revealed to those around her so that she could move towards healing. I was pleased with the way Ray handled the information Helen shared. I did not connect with him like I had with his brothers in the previous books, 
but I was still interested in seeing him find confidence in himself and face his fears. I understood his struggle with having to fly the bomber planes in the war effort, especially with his pastor's heart. This book tackles a really tough topic, and it was extremely hard to read some of the scenes. The treatment that Helen goes through is so wrong. I hurt for her and could feel her pain. While it quickly became obvious there were certain characters that were no good, I was suspicious about someone else right from the very beginning, and eventually it was proven that I had the right to be suspicious. This story was hard to read, both with what was happening in America and what was happening overseas, but it was inspiring to watch the growth of the characters. I was so happy when Helen's situation was revealed to others. I did struggle with some of the parts where the German language was inserted. I understand this was done because of the setting and to make it authentic to what was happening, but I found it hard to understand bits of the interaction. But the faith element was done really well. This book could be very triggering to certain people in certain situations. Again, I don't want to say exactly what it is because it would reveal the story. But the treatment, how some people treat others, I don't know how to share it without sharing it. <laughs> um, yeah, because I mean, if I say what it is, it's totally a spoiler what's going on. However, if you have experienced trauma, reading this book is just going to relive that trauma. Hmm. Just know that there is a triggering element in this between a man and a woman. And I mean, that probably gives it away, but yeah. So basically overall, I really enjoyed the way this story ended because happy feelings. <laughs> it is a historical romance after all. So I would recommend reading this series. However, you must read this series in order because books two and three overlap a little bit of what happened in the book prior. As I said, in book two, we have a time period overlap from what and how book one ended, but from a different perspective. And then book three is the exact same thing. It overlaps how book two ended but from a different perspective. The strong message throughout all three of these books is learning to turn to and trust God through it all. And then the one quote that really stuck out to me in book three was, honesty is important, but so is discretion. So sometimes it's not best to speak everything up because you know, you want to protect people as well, but you have to be honest. I just, this, this series was amazing. And even though, so I gave book one, five stars and I gave books two and three, four stars only because I didn't connect with the characters as much in books two and three as I did with book one. And I think that was because of the some of the traumatic experiences in books two and book three, or just the way they were, the way they were presented, the characters themselves. You know, there's certain personalities you connect with more than others, and I, I think that's probably why. But I highly recommend this series. I loved the very strong faith message, and how each character grew. And there are some, I mean, it happens during a war time. So there are some very horrific scenes for the war, but not only in the war, the, you know, those not involved on the front lines of the war also experience some very hard things because that's part of life. But 
it also ended with God's showing God's faithfulness, hope, trust, just such a strong faith message. So I highly recommend this series and I will definitely be reading more by Sarah Sunday. As I said, I've already got another book on my TBR and I have added a bunch more to my TBR or to my wish list because I just, yeah, she, she has hooked me and I love the way she tells a story. So like, even though I don't know anything about flying a plane, I didn't even know what a V-17 was before I started this story. So, and there's a lot of technical elements shared, but it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the story. And I really, I had to look up a B-17 at the end because I was really interested in getting to know the kind of the layout of the plane, more of it. And it helped me understand some of the positions of the other men that were involved in the story. So I've learned so much about this. And I can't say I really knew a lot about World War II or the kind of like the exact going ons during that time because I haven't read a lot of World War II fiction or nonfiction or like I just, yeah. So yes, I highly recommend this series. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Have a good day. Bye.